Hi, everyone, and welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovation from leaders in digital infrastructure. I am Barb Mitchell, and I'm joined today by Paul Everett, who's the Director of Virtual Design and Construction for Everett Mission, Mission Critical. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Always appreciate uh, the time that you have to to talk to us here at JSA TV. And, you know, we're here. It's day one at DCD Connect in London. What are your thoughts so far of the show? Well, it's, as you said, we're just getting started. So it's great to be here with you and your yeah. team at another event. So we are very much looking forward to the rest of the day in the conference. Early on, it's always exciting to connect with peers in the industry. It's um, such an exciting time to be in the industry. We're seeing so much growth and development uh, kind of at unprecedented levels. Yeah. So it is very exciting to kind of share ideas, talk amongst uh, colleagues and different peers in the industry to see kind of what the emerging trends are as they're uh, evolving so rapidly. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I know you've, we were talking that you've been a guest on JSA TV a, a few times, but just in case any of our viewers may not be familiar with Everett, would you mind just giving us just a quick overview of the company? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, at Everett Mission Critical, we specialize in advanced engineering, BIM and VDC, so virtual design and construction services and advanced processes. We only focus on data centers, so we do not work in any other market sectors. Uh, our core focus is on the engineering side, so mechanical, electrical, um, but in-house we have structural, telecom, controls, all other disciplines. So we really look to be a leader and a point of contact for our hyperscale and colo providers in the data center space so that we can lead them through from the onset of a project all the way to a successful completion and uh, hopefully many completions in the future. Amazing. And I understand that you just announced a, a new strategic merger. Can yes. you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, very happy to. And we've been having to kind of tiptoe our way around that right. merger. I know there have been hints given uh, here and there, but yeah, so we're very excited to announce a strategic partnership with Salas O'Brien, uh, something we've been working on for a long time. Um, Salas is a group where their technical abilities and their workflow really complement what we had been um, developing for kind of our 30 year history. Um, so with our internal group, we were about 150 people before. Uh, with Salas, that adds, we're now close to 4,000 people. Wow. So in terms of size, uh, we have grown substantially. Um, but more than anything, it really allows us to deepen our workbench to make sure uh, we can take on more projects from our hyperscale and colo uh, clients. They are moving at such a rapid pace that yeah. we need to make sure that we have a workbench that's able to support and continue going with their projects and really make sure that our deliverables for them are staying consistent and at the high quality our clients have come to expect yeah. from us. Um, and with Salas too, they, they focus on many different asset classes. So we're able to really leverage a lot of the knowledge from on-site power generation, which is becoming very relevant to our data center practice, uh, structural on the cold form steel. There's a lot of technical expertise that we're able to leverage kind of both ways. So a, a very exciting partnership, uh, pretty recent that it's become official, but we are yeah. excited to show uh, our clients and, and others how uh, how we can be successful moving forward. That's amazing news. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that with us. And I, I'm curious, We uh, again, we spoke a little bit just before we went live, we were just talking about the the team and and how um, the reach that you have globally. And I just wouldn't mind adding on to that. Just sure. that last question with that. So I, I understand. Obviously, your team has grown significantly, yes. and you have additional services and solutions you can provide. But but a team is an amazing, important thing. So tell us about that and where are they located and and how does that impact how you're able to go to market. Yeah, absolutely. So there's the merger with Salus that's deepened our workbench, but of, of course, internally, we're continuing to hire as much as possible. I think one uh, advantage that we have with our virtual workflows, so we do a lot of advanced modeling, simulation, I um, mean, that work can happen really anywhere globally. Uh, in our primary market, we work primarily in the US is where our most of our work happens. We do some work in the EMEA region, Canada, a little bit in Mexico, but primarily in the US. And we were running into a real roadblock in terms of hiring talent in the US. Yeah. We are doing it, but had a lot of challenges. As I'm sure my peers will echo the same kind of comments. Um, so our, inter our HR team and our incredible hiring staff have worked a lot in terms of a global outreach. Um, so we've really grown uh, staff counts in Central and South America. We have a strong European base as well. The European base is actually very helpful um, for our side with the time difference. We actually get a longer production day because yeah. of the time difference they're ahead. Um, and more than anything, we're able to find people who know how to use the tools that we're working with. So the workflows, 
um, and are familiar with the software we're using. So we just because our clients are growing so quickly, we had to get pretty innovative in terms of how we were hiring new staff and finding new staff. Um, so instead of being focused just in the markets we're working on, we're really hiring globally um, and finding the best talent we can across the globe. Amazing. Yeah, I, I, it is. It, it's a challenge, I think, yeah. for to to bring in. We're going to come back to that a little bit more. But um, but first, let's talk about some of the 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 tools that you're able mm -hmm. to leverage at Everett. And if you can just talk about how you're continuing to stay ahead on that front. Of course. So uh, digital workflows and digital construction are core to our practice uh, at Everett. So we are not only using it just for the engineering side, but we want to think about the overall construction lifecycle of the data center. So we want to factor into our design, construction, maintainability, schedule. How can we adapt our design because just to think of design in one silo we feel it's not really completing our job as the engineers we really need to think of the entire project scope um, so 4d scheduling to help simulate construction sites to see how we can change our design to make schedules uh, improved we are also looking a lot at generative design generative design is kind of when you give uh, a program a set of parameters and then it allows it optimizes the site based on code and kind of input parameters so you're able to give uh, several inputs to generate millions of potential results. This is really helpful when we're working on our campus builds for hyperscale and colo providers because one building is complicated enough, but naturally we're building sometimes up to five and six on a single site. Mm -hmm. And it also helps a lot, I think, as, as designers, whether we like to admit it or not, we have some inherent biases kind of in our process. So this generative design that we're utilizing really eliminates any inherent biases. And sometimes we end up at the same result as our, because our, our team are very, very talented, we end up at the same result, but really helps us work through and vet through all the potential solutions um, in the design cycle. Yeah, that's, um, it's, as you're talking, I'm thinking about how you've assembled the team with yeah. the talent. I mean, you were, you were just saying some, your your team has comes to the table with a lot of this skill and knowledge and the ideas and, and you you know iterate it together and and come out with such amazing innovation together as a team and and so it, coming back to the talent question because mm -hmm. you you actually you talked quite a bit about how you're you're really getting trying to get ahead of mm -hmm. that talent search and and um, and and build that out and get ahead of it. But how do you attract those young folks? And what advice would you give to to young people? We you know we it was as we think about the the young people that are coming out of university mm -hmm. and ready to start their careers. What what advice do you give them to to say this is this is a path you should you should follow? So in terms of I guess attracting new talent, we're really focused on strategic partnerships at the university or college level. I say university because we're both Canadians. Right. Yeah. But uh, I. <laughs> At the uh, at the collegiate level, we have a lot of key partnerships with universities where we're working with professors in terms of research projects that we're getting early involvement. I think the data center space is such an amazing industry to be in right now and has been for a while and the future is looking really bright. So it's, uh, it's really for us about exposing the next generation to the possibilities and just to make them aware of kind of what's available in our industry. Um, so we're doing a lot of partnerships with universities. We are doing internship programs, so kind of 18 month internship programs in the midst of uh, their studies to help them get involved become familiar with the workflows. And I, I think what's been really key for us is uh, leadership and mentorship of our senior staff uh, for our junior employees. I think we have not been as successful in the past when we haven't had our senior team engaged to really show one, what a path looks like, but, but that real continued education. So continuing yeah. the education, giving our new hires really key roles and allowing them to be key decision makers um, has been uh, incredibly effective for us. So uh, yes, yeah. partnering with the universities, uh, working with them every day, uh, again, through our workflows, lots of scrums and communication. Um, so we really find that, that kind of open communication, although we are growing to a much larger organization, in terms of our communication and the collaboration amongst all our employees, it's a very flat um, structure. So there's no kind of barriers between someone who's junior and more senior. We are all working together to really meet the needs of our clients yeah. um, and work on some of the, the industry's leading projects and uh, globally some of the best engineering projects available. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. 
This has been really interesting. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. So thank you for your time today. I know that it's a busy day. Uh, there's lots still to do. For any closing words or anything you want to say in terms of how people can connect with you either here at the show or, or afterwards? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be down on the trade floor. We have a booth available uh, at the trade floor. We are also serving espresso later. So you did mention that today uh -huh. will be a busy day. Um, <laughs> so you can find us at one of the espresso stations that uh, your team have very kindly helped us set up and I think will be uh, popular as the day goes on. Um, but otherwise available through email or all channels. Uh, really enjoy all the discussions we have here at these trade shows and kind of even those initial discussions that are sparked that go well beyond uh, love continuing the conversation with uh, yeah. peers in the industry. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, really thank appreciate you. your time. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in again to JSA TV coming to you today live from DCD Connect in London. Stay tuned until next time.